So, hey, here comes Let's Rock with the box office top 10 at 31, hundreds of beavers. Which is like a live action Looney Tunes cartoon inspired by uh, 20s and 30s uh, short serials. You won't see anything else like it. I mean, it was never going to be a box office smash, but it is genuinely odd. And we've had loads of emails from people who loved it. Number 10 this week in a violent nature, new entry does exactly what it says in the tin. I think it's a throwback 70s slasher movie. It has been described as an ambient slasher film. And you with an axe. <laughs> so that's what you called it. And they, Put it. They, they've missed a trick not putting that on the poster. I think that works for me. And also gives a tip for um, Enya's next project. Uh, Maxine with three X's, of course, UK's number nine, US it's number eight. Really like this. I think Mia Goth's performance is terrific. I actually think all the X movies are very good. I know that some people have felt this is the weaker of the three installments, but I, I really enjoyed it. Bike Riders at number eight. Looks fantastic. Not the you know not perhaps the movie that's that's on the poster, but if you see this, I say this every week. If you see this and you like it, see the Kathy Bigelow, the Loveless, which I think is coming quite soon to BFI player, and it's it's very very good companion piece. N- number seven is Bad Boys Ride or Die. <sighs> Number six is Indian 2. Just, this wasn't press screened. Um, I did see a, a news report about it which said Indian 2 crashes and burns in every territory, although it is you know, doing all right in the UK box office. If anyone's seen it, let me know. One thing that has not improved in all the time we've been doing this show mm-hmm. is the, the number of times you said this wasn't press screened. Why, why, can, why can't... Um, films like Indian 2 get press screen so that we can actually, it can be part of the national film conversation. In order to press screen something, you have to hire a, a screening room and put the thing on. Quite often they don't get the prints until the very last moment, particularly with uh, Indian movies, because there's a lot of worry about piracy. And also, I mean, I wrote a piece about this for the New Statesman 25 years ago. Uh, their target audience was not, uh, you know, was not uh, affected by what us critics thought. It just didn't make any difference. So they don't Literally, care. Literally, that was what... It, when they thought they don't care, it's that it was like, it, you know, it wasn't It wasn't necessary. I mean, we there have been many moves uh, for critics saying we would love to be able to review the films if they were press screened in advance, but quite often it's to do with the fact that the prints actually won't arrive in okay. the country until the day that the film opens. I say a prints, quiet, DCPs. A, okay, beg your pardon. Quiet Place, day one is number five. I like it. I mean, it's not scary, but it's tense, and uh, Lupita Nyong'o's terrific. Number four here, five in the States, is Fly Me to the Moon. Mark Scanlon says, enjoyed Fly Me to the Moon. Fun, light, romantic comedy, drama with a de- with decent writing and chemistry between the leads, plus a quirky turn from Woody Harrelson. However, I cannot believe that anyone could take against it for supposedly not making it clear that the moon landings happened. Beneath the froth of the light-hearted comedy drama was an important story about truth and integrity. By the end, the whole point is that the reality of what is happening on the moon matters, that this did happen and being clear on the truth cannot be sacrificed. I think the film had a clear anti-conspiracy theory thread underpinning it. As one character says, the truth is the truth, even if no one believes it. And this is a vital message for our times. Thank you, Mark. That's Fly Me to the Moon, number four. Well, we were on exactly the same page. As I said, uh, you know, a, a fellow critic felt differently about it and felt that it fudged the issue, and I don't think it does. I think it is exactly as the, that email just says. It says the truth is the truth, even if no one believes it. And it's fun. The film's fun. Number three is Long Legs. Number two uh, in the States, Fiona, midterm listener, who signs off by saying, still traumatized by James and the Giant Peach in 1996. <laughs> Broaching again the question of whether the BBFC full screen content advice for the, at the start of the movie can be classified as a spoiler. On Friday night at East London Heartland Hackney Picture House, I settled down to watch Mark, the Mark certified scary Long Legs. Yes. Partway through the trailers, a young girl walks in holding a popcorn in the company of two adults. They settle into seats in my row, pausing to take a selfie to mark this important cinematic occasion. I'd guess the girl was around seven. Indeed, her legs were not long enough to bend at the knee in the luxurious cinema seat. What? That's exactly what uh, Fiona thought. This is going to be scary. Should I say something? Isn't this about girls being murdered? What if I say something and I'm told to keep out of our parenting decisions? What if I don't say something and this car advert is replaced by a genuinely traumatising spooky scene? Fiona says, I shrugged off my Britishness. I leant over and said, I just wanted to check that you are really 100% sure you're in the right screen. I think this is going to be quite scary. 
isn't this Despicable Me 4 came in hey. response. <laughs> they hurried off and we all had a good laugh. Well done, it, well done, well done you for doing that. It was only when the BBFC content advice flashed up a few minutes later after the scary trailers that I realised, spoilers aside, maybe it's making sure people aren't confusing their grues from their gruesome in cinemas up and down the country. Up with BBFC certification and occasionally talking to strangers at cinemas. A lot of people, Fiona, would have not done, clearly I might not have done, what you did, but it was clearly the right thing. They just got the wrong screening. And imagine a seven-year-old watching Long Legs, which you told us last week is very scary. Yeah, well done. I mean, it is it is very scary, and it's very, it's very creepy, very kind of brooding atmosphere, and uh, it's you know, I, I really like it. But you're at, I, well done for having the you know having the guts to do that because you're right. I would have been the same as you, just tied up in a knot of anxiety, which would have made the film you know more effective. But but it's it's pretty much full of dread anyway. I really enjoyed it. Uh, number two is Inside Out two. Number three in the states. Huge runaway hit. Um, despite my reservations, turns out that people young and old absolutely love it and having a really profound experience with it. And uh, number one here, number one in America as well as Despicable Me for John in Bracknell, very long term listener, first time emailer, Vanguard Easter, ex Battenberg Witter user, cycling proficiency certificate holder, long expired. I don't think if you've passed the cycling proficiency test, I don't think it expires. No, it? you're proficient. Once yeah. you're proficient, riding a bike is one of the things that you never forget. The good lady here indoors and I took granddaughter number two to see uh, Despicable Me 4 at our local World of Cine on Saturday. Splashed out on the full 3D, 4DX package. Laughed out loud several times. I'm not normally given to doing that in public, but even that pulled into insignificance with the raucous cackling from the group in the next bank of seats to us. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed it, especially all the Easter eggs like the Terminator music in the supermarket and the mega yeah. minion stopping. Uh, the runway was a clear nod to one of the early Spider-Man films. Definitely one for the collection when it comes out on home release. Uh, no up with or down with, because that list could go on forever. But uh, hello, of course, to Jason Pentangle and Fairport Convention. Uh, John in Bracknell, thank you very much indeed. So that's Despicable Me 4 at number one. So on Monday, I was doing a show, and I, there was Dave Norris. And uh, Dave Norris goes, I've got a bone to pick with you. And I said, what? And he went... You said in your review, I thought, what have I done wrong? He likes Minions, because I said, you know, Dave Norris finds Minions funny. He said, you said the only thing wrong with Despicable Me 4 is there isn't Minions 2. And I said, yes. He said, we had Minions 2. It was Rise of Gru. Keep up. And I went, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. I just, I forget which movie is which, because basically it's just <laughs> with them and makes me laugh. So yeah, Dave, sorry, apologies, won't happen again. Mark Honest. Dunn in Toronto. Mark and Simon occasionally email a long-term listener. I wanted to write in and express how appalled I was at the prices in our local multiplex here in Toronto and how much they were charging for a kid's movie. My in-laws are visiting from Ireland and said they would take our six- and four-year-old boys to see Despicable Me 4 on a rainy afternoon since my wife and I had to work. I opened up the multiplex app and picked a showtime and some seats for the four of them and hit checkout. What was the price for four tickets to a kid's movie on a Wednesday afternoon, you ask? And the answer, says Mark, is $75. I was absolutely appalled. Had I been paying, I would have closed the app and refused to pay such extortionate prices. My in-laws were equally, equally aghast, but since they'd promised to take the kids and didn't want to disappoint them, they said they would pay. Now, I did a, con I did a check this morning. Uh, and seventy, if I've got this right, seventy-five dollars is forty-two pounds and twenty-nine pence, which I have to say I'm not appalled by. Uh, well, it's not a surprised lot of, by. It's a, I'm not surprised by. It. It's it's a lot of money for sure, but in London, I would expect to be uh, paying that amount of money. Would you think seventy-five dollars slash forty-two pounds was a lot for four people? It, it's not unexpected. And as you say, in showbiz North London, where you live, you can pay like 18 quid for a cinema ticket. You can pay 20 quid if you're going to one, you know, or 22 if you're going to one of the sort of the posh. So, so yes, I'm, it's, it's a, it's a long, we're a long way from the time when, you know, one pound 50 would get you a seat and a packet of uh, chocolate raisins. Mark says the whole thing reeks of greedflation is his line. Anyway, greedflation, as, for the, that's a good as for the movie, the two kids loved it and were acting out scenes from the movie all evening before bedtime. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Well, so maybe, hopefully, Mark, your parents and your kids had 
their money's worth. Yeah. Although the redactor has said, if you move to East Kent, six pounds per seat at the Hearn Bay, at the Hearn Bay Cavanagh on Saturday afternoon, or four pounds seventy five at the Carlton Westgate, including a booking fee. So clearly, it it can be done. All you have to do is move to East Kent, which you've, if you're in Toronto, is not a lot of help. Child One saw Casablanca in a cinema just outside Liverpool with her and a companion tickets were one pound 50 each so total and they were the only two people in the cinema so three pounds for the screening wow that is that is that is a bargain they loved it they loved it 